I bought this 2006 Mercedes R500 from the famous car YouTuber Sam Crack. He paid $1,500 for this car at auction as a gamble because it was listed as having engine problems. After diagnosing and replacing a couple of coil packs and the EGR valve, Sam was able to get the car to run well. These generation Mercedes have pretty robust engine and transmission. And even though this car is in pretty good condition for its age, it has a ton of deferred maintenance and a lot of cosmetic issues. Over the next few videos, I plan on fixing everything this car needs to become a reliable daily driver, and I will share that experience with you. And before I forget, let me show you everything I'm going to do to this car. And it's right here in the whiteboard. And Gorgeous Wife has nicknamed the car Jabberjaw, which is a cartoon from the 80s which it's very appropriate because this is a huge white car, like a white shark. So this is everything we're going to do to the car. So if you're interested in seeing this in the channel, make sure you subscribe and like the video. That's going to help me. So let's get to work. Right now, I'm going to do the transmission fluid, and I'll explain why. Um, it feels like it's slipping a little bit. It feels almost like the transmission fluid is low, where the engine is cold, it uh, slips a little bit more to transfer the torque to the wheel. So, and, and I've seen this in the past and it feels like it's low on fluid or the fluid is just so bad that it's starting to slip. So I'm gonna do, start with the simple stuff. I'm gonna do the, the transmission fluid. And as I've shown you before, I got the potassium, I got the pin bolts, I got the plug bolt. This is a torque converter bolt. I don't even know if this is the right size. You got the filler adapter, you got the level, the filter. We've got the gasket, and so I got this, uh, what is this? I don't know. It's like a marine pump for oil specifically, so we're going to pump it into the transmission. And I also put the car in the tender because I'm going to use the battery power to power the pump. I don't have an extra battery. So this is it. Let me jack up the car. Let's get this started. There are a lot of videos on YouTube on how to do the transmission fluid change for the 72.9 transmission, so I'm not going to go into details. But I can say that the fluid that was in my transmission was really, really dirty. And also, I had a leak around the pan, and that's why probably uh, the car was slipping because the fluid was just low. Uh, take your time in removing these bolts. They are aluminum. So don't use power tools and you can't really not make a mess. It's impossible. It seems like no matter how much effort you put into not making a mess, when you do a trans service, you're always going to make a mess. I don't know, guys. The filter, let me try to show you guys. It seems kind of, kind of dirty. Doesn't seem great. The fluid. It's not the worst, but you know, it doesn't look right. So in contrast, the new filter, you can see it's kind of neat, clean and white. And let me show you how much I pulled out of the of fluid out of the transmission. I don't think it's enough. Let me show you guys something. I transferred the transmission fluid over to a pan that has uh, a measurement. And I don't know if you can see, but it's actually three quarts of transmission fluid that came out of the pan. I'm not 722.9 expert, but I don't think this is enough. And the fact that it was leaking, I think I'm onto something. Let me know in the comments how many quarts should have come out of the, of the pan. As I take out the old gasket, I realize it's really hard. And this car hasn't seen a trans service in many, many years. Um, also make sure you clean the magnets and put them back in the right position. I think this is the right position. You guys will let me know. Make sure you also put back the level. And the new gasket goes in only one way. You just have to follow the indents and you'll be fine. I tried to bleed the torque converter, but I spun it probably 10 times and I could not find any bolt. So if you guys know if this is a specific 
version of the torque converter that doesn't have the, the bolt to drain, you know, let me know. Now let's see if you can spot what I did wrong here. Yep, I put the pan back without the filter. That's not the right way to do it. And I only found out after torquing the bolts and starting to fill the transmission. But there's more. As I start to fill it, I find out that I didn't seat the gasket, right? So it started to leak. But thankfully, that gave me the opportunity to put back the filter now and properly seat the gasket. When you torque these, start in the middle, it's two stage, four newton meters, and then 180 degrees or eight newton meters, whatever comes first. Be very careful. These are aluminum bolts and they tend to break easily. So I got my scan tool. I'm gonna go into transmission because we're gonna need to let it warm up till 45 degrees Celsius. So live data. A level check, is that it? Yeah. Probably. Transmission oil temperature 25, 26 degrees Celsius. It's got to be in 45. So let me start the car now. Now that we're at 45 degrees Celsius, let's set the level. It's another day and I'm going to do the engine flush. So I got this STP engine flush. I have no idea if this is good or bad, but I'm going to use it anyway. Let's see. It says here that it cleans sludge and you should do it every, you know, after vehicles over 75,000 miles. That's interesting. I got filter. I got new oil and I got leftover oil that I'm going to use for the engine flush. And I got a uh, high point gear lubricant with for both front and rear differential that I'm going to change. This is not the expensive stuff, but I think it's okay. It's not an expensive car. So let's get this done. So now I'm doing the gear oil for the differentials and I found something very interesting. And this takes the neglect to another level. I don't know if you noticed, but the fluid that came out of the rear differential wasn't really bad. But wait until you see the fluid from the front differential. Wait for it. That's it. Someone decided that they would change just the rear differential fluid for some reason and not change the front differential. It does not make sense. This is neglect to another level. When you tighten these, be careful, don't over tighten. 
these are aluminum, you can break the whole transfer case by over tightening these bolts. So let's pull up the cover and I want to show you guys something. This engine seems to be a little bit sludged up and there seems to be quite a bit of sludge. There's a lot of glare, but you can see there's sludge. So now I'm going to pour the engine flush. Let's see. And we're going to do Bluetooth. Just a little bit of spill. And you have to run it for 15 minutes at 3000 RPMs. All right, let's run it. We've got a fan running here uh, for the exhaust gases, and now we're going to run the engine for 15 minutes. Fifteen minutes later. So let's idle it down for a little bit. In the first flush, the oil came out real dirty, but I didn't see any forbidden glitter, so that's good news. Wait till you see the filter. Look at that. I think I'm still gonna do another flush, maybe with AMS oil or Liquid Molly. So after putting the sacrificial oil in, I ran the car for another 10 minutes and then drained the oil again. And considering I just put this oil in, look at how dirty it is. So that's why it's important that you do a second flush with oil before you put the final oil in. Now I'm gonna do a power steering flush and I have the reservoir here and it's something I didn't know and I'm sure most of you are going to know this and by the way this is a doorman it's an aftermarket this is the code um, this is a maintenance item it has a filter in it and if you let the fluid go bad which it went bad on this car it tends to clog up the filter and you get a lot of power steering noise when you're driving the car um, so if you don't replace the reservoir what happens your power steering pump is going to go out real soon. So it's actually a maintenance item. It's a, it's a good practice when you're going to do the fluids, which are expensive. You also do the reservoir. This is like 20, 30 bucks, about 30 bucks in FCP euro. And the fluids themselves are like 30 bucks each liter. So we're going to do this right now. Let's get to it. So that fluid looks very bad. And also I can see that there's some leakage. So there's some pressure building inside the reservoir. And I hear a lot of hydraulic pump noise when I'm driving. So the fact that it's bubbling up and there's a lot of noise leads me to suspect that the reservoir has a clogged filter. So we're gonna have to replace this. It's gonna be very simple. By the way, this has got a clip. You obviously just need to remove the clip, which I didn't do, stupid of me, but I knew, you know, I was getting rid of this. So just make sure you get the clip. Now you get the clip, don't do like me. Get the clip first. We got the plug that came with the reservoir, so let's put it in. Make sure it's all the way in there. It did take me a little bit of work to get the clip in. Just uh, take your time. Now we're gonna put the bolt back in. We're gonna put the plug back because we're gonna fill the reservoir 
with fluid, then we're gonna turn the steering wheel lock to lock, make sure we drain all of the old fluid. Put the bottle back, there you go. CHF 11S. Now we're gonna turn this lock to lock to purge out the old fluid while we keep filling in with new fluid. So it's starting to come out just green. Yes, I'm just gonna do a little bit more and then we're gonna close this up. Now we're gonna turn on the car and we're gonna keep turning lock to lock to bleed out all the air. Don't have any reading, so let's add a little bit more. All right, so we gotta keep turning so there are no more bubbles. Let's also check for leaks. Now it doesn't seem to be leaking, so we seem to be fine. Let's take a measurement. And it's a little bit high because it's at the max and it's still cold. So I think I'm just going to pull out a little bit of fluid. All right, so I'm all done. Everything is connected. I put the hose back, put the clamp, uh, verified that there are no leaks. It's at the right level. All right, and let me show you how much fluid I pulled out. This is it. It's, it was in pretty rough shape. Of course, it's a little bit green at the end, but uh, what was in there was basically black. I also decided to do the tensioner, the idler, and the accessory belt just for good measure. You can see the belt doesn't look bad, but I still don't know how old it is. The idler pulley is not in the best shape, but it's not bad. I tested the water pump, which is good. And I also tested the alternator, but the tensioner is just trash. Removing the idler on the R500 is a little bit tricky because the bolt's so long, it hits the fan shroud. So I had to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts for the fan shroud and drop it a little bit just so I could remove the bolts from the idler. New pulley goes in. Don't forget the washer. And now the cap. The tensioner is held by two E12 bolts. And before you can access the bottom bolt, you have to insert a pin inside uh, a small hole so you can fit the socket. All right, so 
So after a lot of work, came out. Some blue thread locker. I also had to replace one rear and one front speed sensor because of the ABS code. This is an easy job. You just have to be careful not to drop the sensors, otherwise you might just damage them. Since we're here, we're going to do the air filter. So Sam was kind enough to provide us with new ones. I don't think it needs it, but we're going to do it anyway. All right, it's some sort of goo in here or glue, something weird. Let's put the new one in. Just make sure you seat the engine air filters correctly before you put them in. I also put new wiper blades because the old ones were just dried out and didn't work. These are inexpensive ones from Rock Auto. Trying to diagnose the EVAP code, I checked the purge valve in the front, I checked the EVAP valve. And I did a leak down test on the tank, not a leak down, it's actually a vacuum test and it's not holding vacuum. So I decided I was going to check the obvious first, which is the guest cap. And guess what I found? This is a very crusty guest cap and I can feel that the, the rubber, the seal is just gone. So I got a brand new secondhand guest cap at the junkyard and I'm going to throw it in and this probably is going to solve the problem, but we'll check for codes later. This is everything we tackled on this video. We did a bunch of fluids and basic maintenance, and we fixed the ABS code with the wheel speed sensor. We also fixed the evac code with a new gas cap. So I still have a bunch of other things I need to do. And in the next video, I'm going to try to do all of the spark plugs. I'm going to tackle the fuel injectors. I think some of them might be clogged. I'm going to do a brake flush, rotors, coolant flush, thermostat, AC charge. I still have a bunch of things to do. So if you like this content, make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you on the next video.